Hello everyone, so uh, it's been a while since I've made a video. Uh, I'm trying to think, has it been a month? I think it's been like at least three weeks, maybe four weeks a month. Um, just been very busy. Um, I'm going to get to a view in a second. Sorry for anybody that's watching this just for the view. I have to talk to my subscribers real quick. Um, basically, I just got back from a trip to Key West. I live in South Florida, so my family, we decided to go take a trip to Key West for my mom's birthday. We were there for a whole week. Um, so the whole past week I wasn't able to do any videos, obviously. Um, I mean, I could have filmed something there, but there really wasn't anything worth, you know, for my channel at least. Um, is this too dark? I can't tell. Maybe my brightness is too low. Anyways, um, I'm gonna get to a view real quick, um, like I said, but I just gotta, um, let y'all know. Okay, it's not too dark. Um, I've just been busy again, you know, sorry, but, <laughs> um, I'll have a new video out tomorrow. It's an unboxing. You can probably figure out what it is. Um, came out on Tuesday, uh, missed out on it cause I was in Key West, but, uh, got back today and I know this review was late as well for Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, this movie came out last week and it was literally the day we got to Key West because we got there on Thursday, last Thursday, today's Thursday. So I could have saw it Thursday night, which I normally do for, you know, Marvel movies, MCU movies, whatever. Um, so I... I was planning on doing that, but then we had the trip, so that happened. And they did have a movie theater down there. My family, we decided to see Incredibles 2. I didn't do a review for it. Um, it was very good, though. Um, I did a kind of mini review on my Instagram for that. So if you want to know my thoughts on Incredibles 2, I thought it was really good. Um, still like the first one more. But um, they didn't want to see Ant-Man, uh, unfortunately. I was like, I want to see Ant-Man because like, I have to wait a whole week <laughs> and I have to avoid spoilers and whatnot. Thankfully, I avoided spoilers. I don't know any, I didn't know anything about it going in. Um, and this review will contain spoilers at the end. So there's not going to be any spoilers right now. Um, I'm going to review the movie normally without spoilers. And then later on, I'll talk about spoilers as I usually do. Um, and I really want to talk about spoilers because if you've seen the movie, uh, yeah, but, um, so, yeah, I'm late on this review. Sorry about that. Um, but I felt, you know, for MCU movie, I have to review it, even if it's a week late. Um, so, yeah, I had to wait a whole week, which kind of sucks. But like I said, I didn't hear any spoilers, so it's okay. Um, okay, first thing I want to talk about with this movie, um, kind of with the same thing with Deadpool 2. There were initial reviews that were like, this movie's not good well not not good per se but like the reviews were kind of like mediocre like for deadpool 2 and this the, the reviews were like oh it's whatever it's i guess there were even some bad reviews i think i heard a lot of uh not so good reviews um about this movie like i didn't i watched a few movie reviews on youtube and whatnot um kind of average ratings i guess the reviewers gave that gave the movie um i did see one review that gave it like maybe two out of five stars which i completely disagree with same case with Deadpool 2 I thought this was a very solid movie I really enjoyed it I thought I really okay I don't know what's wrong with this movie um that people would make a big deal out of it well not a big deal you know what I mean like uh review saying it's not you know what you're expecting it's not gonna be as fun or great as you think um and you know people saying oh it's a weaker MCU movie I completely disagree with that um, the only thing I can think of is maybe the villain. Um, the villain was fine, in my opinion, but I could see maybe some people would have a problem with the villain. Maybe not enough development or enough character, you know, personality, I guess you could say. But I thought the villain was just fine. I, I didn't have a problem with that. Um, that's like my only thing I could see. The rest of the movie I thought was really good, really entertaining. Um, and my favorite thing about Ant-Man in particular is, like, the mechanics of, you know, growing and shrinking and all this stuff, all the technology that's involved. Um, the first movie had, you know, had quite a bit of that. But this one, they really, like, <laughs> they really stepped it up. Uh, growing, shrinking, all kinds of stuff. Quantum. It, it, it was really cool. That was, like, my favorite. That's, like, my favorite aspect about the whole Ant-Man character and, I guess, universe, whatever. Um... Yeah, so I really enjoyed the hell out of the mechanics of this movie. I figured I would. Um, I knew they'd step it up. Um, so yeah, the cast was good as well. Of course, Paul Rudd, hilarious. Uh, Michael Pena, of course, was funny. You know, I noticed too, people probably have a problem with his character because they're kind of doing the same thing where, like in Guardians of the Galaxy, Drax, 
was like at first kind of serious, but also funny, obviously. Um, but then in the second movie, he's just like funny the whole time. Um, so they're kind of doing the same thing with Drax where it's like they're taking the Lewis character and like, you know, making him more of like a comedic, you know, but I, I didn't have a problem with it. I thought the humor, it's typical Marvel humor. Like, I don't know why people are getting mad at, at it at this point. It's mine. You can expect it. And the humor was good. I thought I, I, I thought it was funny. Um, you know, Evangeline Lilly played the Wasp. She did an excellent job. She's a really good, uh, action star, I guess you could say. I haven't seen her in much. Um, I've seen a few episodes of Lost. I never got into it. Is it still on Netflix? I hope it is, because I actually want to watch it eventually, like the whole thing. I watched the first few episodes of Lost, and so I'm kind of familiar with her. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anything else she's been in. She was in the Hobbit movies, right? I, I, I have to rewatch those. It's been a long time. Uh... She was in The Hobbit, um, but I don't really know anything else from, from her. But uh, she she was great in this, I thought. Um, oh, also, uh, let's say, okay, I don't want to give anything away, but like Walton Goggins' character, who I'm a big fan of his, by the way, um, Hateful Eight, he was tremendous in, um, and a bunch of other movies. But uh, Walton Goggins, uh, his character... Um, I feel like people would complain about that character as well. Like, oh, maybe he was kind of useless to the plot. Uh, no, I don't think so. I thought he added more to the movie, to be honest. Um, his character, I really liked, uh, the whole look of his character. It felt like a, it felt like a true comic book character, like come to life. You know what I mean? Like a suit and tie kind of villain, not like a super, super villain. Um, I enjoy, I thought his character was, was cool. Like, you know, um, he's kind of like the inconvenience that keeps on showing up when you don't want him to. Um, but I didn't get annoyed by it or anything because, you know, I'm a fan of his, like I said. And I thought his character, like, the whole look of him and his entourage and, you know, that uh, white Cadillac he was driving. I thought it looked like it was right out of a comic book. So I liked that about him. Um, the main villain, like I said earlier, uh, Ghost, uh, I didn't have any problems with. Um, there was enough backstory. There was enough uh, motivation as to why this character is doing what they're doing. Um but, like I said, there's not much of a personality there, like, you know, a Loki, per se, or Killmonger. Um, so people are kind of worried that, oh, this year, this year, <clears throat> excuse me, this year Marvel's going to have the best villains with Killmonger, Thanos, and then hopefully this ghost character's going to be good. So I assume people were kind of let down by that, um, you know, because the villains lately have been good. Last year, too, with uh, Ego, the Living Planet, was great, and then... Uh, Vulture was great, and then Hela from Thor Ragnarok, people were kind of mixed on. So it's kind of the same thing. It's like the third villain, you know, uh, kind of ruins it a little bit. But I didn't have a problem with Hela, you know. Kate Blanchett was having fun with that. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so I could see why people didn't like that. But the whole movie, though, like, if you, okay, let's say you don't like the Walton Goggins character. You don't like the main villain. Okay, what else didn't you like? Like, I don't see any other issues. I mean, that's just me, personally. Um, and also, one review I saw, I think it was the same one that gave it a 2 out of 5 stars, said the movie was dragging at some points. I I wasn't bored at all. I mean, me, you know, I don't get bored. You know, I, I love, let's say, uh, for example, Blade Runner 2049. That movie's like three hours. I, I don't get bored of that whatsoever. But I can understand people get bored of that. Um, so this movie, I don't see it at all. Even myself, as a person that doesn't get bored at all, I can't see anybody getting bored at this. I was invested the whole time. So... I don't know. Uh, like, the, the reviews with Deadpool 2, I, I don't see the problems. Uh, maybe I'm just, like, brainwashed. Maybe Marvel has finally made me one of their uh, person, their not persons, their, um, their consumers that just, you know, oh, I love everything. No, I can critique stuff still. Like, you know, Iron Man 2, horrible movie. Um, and then, you know, Thor, The Dark World, not so good. You know, there's they've had their bumps on the road. I mean, they're, they've been doing very good recently, obviously. I'm loving this uh, universe right now because this is the 20th movie now and it just keeps getting better and better, in my opinion. I'm not saying this is better than Avengers Affinity War or Black Panther. I'm not saying the movies get better progressively, but, like, the whole universe building and, you know, um, shared universe stuff with the characters and, you know, it's just getting better. You know what I mean? Um, it's really working. DC... Pfft. No offense to any DC fans, but 
it's, they got nothing on on this universe. I'm telling you, MCU knocks DCEU out of the park without question. Um, so, anyways, um, anything else I could say that's not spoilers? Because like I I love talking spoilers, but I don't want to do that right now. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, I'll, I will give it a rating in a second. Let me just try to gather my... Because I literally just got out of the movie. Uh, I'm trying to, like, think of stuff I might have missed. Um, you know, also the returning cast from the first movie. Uh, his daughter, you know... Uh, or should I say Scott Lang's daughter. She was great in this. She's a good child actor. Um, she's a little bit older now, obviously. It's been, what, three years since the first movie? Um, she did a good job. She was funny. Um, her chemistry with Paul Rudd is really, I love that, the, the father-daughter, uh, character is great. Um, her father-daughter relationship, I should say. Um, his ex-wife, and then, you know, uh, the cop husband, what's his name, from Boardwalk Empire. Anybody else seen that show? Underrated show. Um, even though the first few seasons got Emmy attention, but then it kind of just slowly died. Uh, but Bobby Cavanali, whatever his name is, he was in Boardwalk Empire Season 3 as the main villain. He won an Emmy for that role. He's a great actor. Um, check out that show, definitely. Like I said, underrated. So he was good in this again. Um, uh, you know, T.I. and Lewis and the other guy, you know, Scott Lang's crew, they were all great and funny. So, yeah, I I really enjoyed the hell out of this. Um it just it was just a super entertaining fun movie with great mechanics and it felt like a true comic book movie also um like when i was watching i think i reviewed thor ragnarok the same way it felt like a true comic book movie um so yeah that was cool um i think that's about it i think that's about it so rating i'll give it a probably saw a solid eight out of ten um uh, maybe eight and a half I always do that. I always give it like um, movies. If you go to my, all my reviews, I'm always like a solid eight, eight and a half. Um, but I think I'll sit at an eight for now. Um, I'm going to rewatch it a million times on Blu-ray, obviously. 4K. Um, yeah, for now, I'll just give it eight out of ten. Eight and a half will be really generous because I just saw it. So I can't I can't be too nice. I got to stop being so nice to movies. Um, so, yeah, eight out of ten. Definitely. Um, I wouldn't go lower than that, no. Maybe higher, we'll see, as I rewatch it. Maybe I'll push it up to eight and a half. I am planning on re-ranking, by the way, the MCU movies. I'm waiting for Infinity War to come out on 4K, um, next month. Can't wait for that, by the way. Once I own that, and I rewatch it a million times, then I'll do my definitive ranking video. I know you guys, some people have been requesting that. Um, and I, I will include this movie also, even though I, I've only seen it once, um... I'll try to include this one, too. But anyways, somebody's driving by. I don't know. It's, it's kind of awkward. I'm just sitting here, like, recording. Um, it's, like, 11 o'clock. I don't even know if I'm going to have this uploaded before midnight. Um, so, technically, you might get two videos today um, if it's Friday when you're seeing this. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, so 8 out of 10. Okay, spoiler time. So, if you haven't seen the movie, leave the video, come back later, whatever. Okay. Three, two, one. Spoilers. All right. First thing I need to talk about. Oh man, that mid credit scene. You know, I was expecting. Okay, uh, I heard it wasn't a spoiler. I heard that the mid credit scene ties into Infinity War, which I expected anyways. I mean, how do you follow up Infinity War with this movie and not address anything? Obviously, it takes place before the snap, um, but the mid credit scene takes place during the snap. Uh, so I did expect some people to vanish. I did not expect the Wasp to vanish because she was announced to be in the next uh, Avengers movie, which, you know, so was Ant-Man and uh, Hawkeye in the first uh, Infinity War, right? Um, you know, you can't believe, you can't always trust uh, who's going to be listed for the cast. And also some artwork leaked out of Avengers 4, which featured all the heroes that are still alive except for the Wasp. So I kind of had an idea, oh, maybe the Wasp is going to get you know, uh, vanished or whatever you want to say, but I did not expect either Hank Pym and then, um, Janet, the wife, right. Uh, to also vanish. It's like they <laughs> went through this whole movie to save her and now she's gone. Now, of course I know, you know, in Avengers four people, they're going to return somehow. All the people that vanished, they're going to be saved in some way. But now I'm curious, um, Ant-Man is trapped in the quantum realm. So it's like, 
I'm curious, was that what protected him from the snap? I mean, there's also, there's likely a chance he wouldn't have vanished because only half of the universe was, you know, random selection got blown away. Um, so I'm curious, is that what protected him? And then also I'm wondering, how is he going to get out of there? Because, like, the only way he, was communicate, he can communicate to the outside world is through that, you know, um, walkie-talkie or whatever that was that's left dangling. Um, so are, like, the Avengers, is somebody going to come across that and be like, what is this? And then... <laughs> start talking to it and because i'm hearing rumors also avengers 4 involves them going into the quantum realm going back in time or something so i don't know it's going to be interesting to see for sure um but that was crazy when it showed all three of them vanish i was like no way i like i expected maybe hank pym to vanish and it would be tragic oh, oh no um i didn't expect the mom to die like that or vanish whatever and the Wasp. I, I kind of had an idea she might, because she wasn't in the artwork, which featured all the heroes um, for Avengers 4. So that was crazy. And then also, okay, another thing I heard, the end end credit scene, like the very last scene they show, everyone's like, oh, you can just leave the theater because it's pointless. Actually, it isn't kind of pointless because it takes place after the snap. And you see it's silence. There's, you know, static on the TV or, the, you know, not static, the little color thing. It's like, Beep it's just like it's kind of creepy it's like whoa like the world is like <laughs> in chaos um but like you can't see all the chaos that's happening um it's just like a creepy thing and it shows the ant playing the drums or whatever and some one of their viewers was like it was in the trailer but yeah sure the ant playing the drums it was funny i mean yeah it was in the trailer or whatever but like it was cool I, the few seconds we saw of you know just emptiness and it showed the TV with, you know, no signal, whatever. That was just kind of creepy to me. Um, and then also Ant-Man and the Wasp will return. And then it showed a question mark. Like, <laughs> they're toying with us. And I was really hoping that it would say Ant-Man will return. And then in Avengers, whatever. And it would re reveal the title. Because they're keeping the title so secret for some reason for the next Avengers. Um, obviously... If it did say Ant-Man will return in Avengers, whatever, people would have been talking about it. I would have been spoiled. So I wasn't expecting it. I was like, okay, they're not going to reveal the title at the end of this movie. It's okay. Um, people would have been posting about it for sure. Um, and I would have looked at it. Like, okay, that's not a spoiler for this movie. I'll, I just want to know what the title is. Like, come on. Apparently, though, the title is going to be Avengers Endgame. End and then game, not together. End, end game. Um, some, somebody leaked the title or something like that. I don't know if it's 100% true or not. I mean, it's whatever. I, that's a decent title, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, we're supposed to be hearing what it is at the end of the year, supposedly. So we'll see. But, um, so other spoilers. Um, oh, so going into this movie, I, I was kind of getting a Guardians of the Galaxy 2 kind of vibe with Michelle Pfeiffer. I was wondering, oh, is she going to end up being a villain or something? Because, like, if you look on the poster, you can see her character and, like, her attire. I was like, oh, she kind of looks villainous. I don't know. I was kind of getting Kurt Russell, you know, Ego, the Living Planet vibe. She's going to end up being a villain. But no, I was completely wrong. Lawrence Fishburne was actually kind of a villain. That surprised me. Um, you know, the little bit we saw of him in the trailers. Um, but his, you know, I liked his character, um, his little, his relationship with Ghost. Um, and like I said, Ghost... The actress did a good job, I think, and, you know, there was enough backstory and enough motivation. Um, so I, I thought the character was solid. You know, I nothing spectacular. It's fine to say that. I wouldn't say bad. Um, but definitely good action, though. She she can fight. I'm sure she trained a lot for this movie. Um, yeah, this whole movie was, you know, action-packed and really great stuff, um, the director came back from the first movie, uh, Peyton Reed, he did a good job, he's really stepped up his game with this one, so, uh, any other spoilers, yeah, I talked about the main ones, um, already, I think that's about it, um, oh, this is another thing, I was wondering if they would address this, so, I don't know how the quantum realm, like, works, obviously, I mean, it's fictional, but, uh, Janet, the mother, she's been trapped in there, what, 30-something years or whatever it is. So does she not need to eat or use the restroom or sleep? Like, you know what I mean? Uh, 
I was wondering if they would address that. Like once she got out, like how did you survive? How did you survive this whole time without food or water? Or I assume that time works differently differently down there, um, for sure. But still, obviously, a lot of time has passed. She's been down there for a long time, regardless if it's thirty years or ten years, you know, from her perspective. Um, but like, do you not need anything when you're down there? This is like a serious question. I also had a question with Guardians of the Galaxy. How are all the aliens speaking English? Uh, that's another thing, right? But um, there's a little part in Guardians 1 where it says, oh, Peter Quill has a translator thing in his neck when he's getting the police, when the police are like showing his stats or whatever. Um, but then when the Guardians meet the Avengers, everyone's speaking English to each other. So I don't know. Um, yeah. Because what I'm trying to say is in Guardians 1, supposedly you're you're hearing the, vo the English voices from the aliens from Peter's perspective because he has a translator thing in his neck or something. Um, but then, like I said, in Avengers, Iron Man meets Drax and Mantis and they're speaking English to him. So, like, I, I don't know. It's whatever. It's just like a nitpick kind of thing. It's like, how did she survive without food and water? Maybe it's different down there where you don't need it. Maybe you just... Or maybe she's been eating those little larva bug things that are up there and just... I don't know. I I don't know. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if they're ever going to address that in the third movie. I assume there's going to be a third movie because the way MCU works, it looks like each hero gets a trilogy. Um, Guardians is getting a third movie. You know, Spider-Man's going to have a trilogy. It looks like they don't want to go past three movies, though. You notice that? They never made an Iron Man 4 or a Thor 4. I mean, Thor 3 is still new. They never made a Captain America 4. So I wonder. I mean, they could say Captain America and just change, you know, maybe Falcon's going to become Captain America. Um, they'll just change the person who dons the, you know, the name. Um, so from what I can tell, it looks like they only go to trilogies and that's it. But the exception of Avengers, obviously, because um, there's going to be a fourth one and so on. Um so that's what it looks like to me. I don't know if that's like, that's the vibe I'm getting. Um, obviously, they couldn't make a sequel to Incredible Hulk because of issues with Universal. But every other movie has gotten a sequel so far, right? Aside from Doctor Strange, but they are planning a sequel to that. Um, yeah, I think every every single MCU movie's had a sequel. Black Panther, you know, still new. They're going to do a sequel, clearly. Um, Spider-Man, the sequel was announced. So I think every little, you know... Um, What's the word? Uh, series? Whatever. You know, little this little sub-series, I think each one gets a trilogy, is what I'm trying to say. I, I was, there's a proper word. I can't think of it. Oh, franchise. There you go. Each little franchise goes to three movies, is what I'm predicting. Um, so, yeah, there's probably going to be a third Ant-Man movie. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm done rambling. Uh, too much rambling. Thanks for watching this whole video, by the way. 23 minutes right now. Um, 8 out of 10. Great time. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And let me know what you thought of the movie. Um, you know, if you're going to say any spoilers, make sure your comment says SPOILERS in all caps. I don't know if how many views I'm going to get on this review because it's a week late. Um, sorry for that, but yeah, can't do much about it. So anyways, thanks for watching this whole thing. Let me know what you thought of the movie um, and what your thoughts are on those bad reviews. You know, if you're seeing it, my... The same way I am. It's like, well, I didn't have a problem with the movie. Let me know your thoughts on that, because I didn't have a problem with the movie. So, yeah. Thanks for watching this. That's been Ant-Man and the Wasp, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.